All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and with charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in JMS Chicago. Uh, come to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, the one that be edifying. And uh, what I want to talk about in this lesson is uh, the topic of the Gentiles. All right, the Gentiles um, that um, you know, obviously in the Christian Christianism, Catholicism, and um, you know, fake Israelite camps. Uh, that teach that people of the other nations of the Gentile nations can be saved and can make it into the kingdom of heaven like um, and receive the blessings of the Israelites which is um, you know it's not sound doctrine okay um, and what I have pulled up here is a scripture that um, people like to use to say that um, you know the Most High opened up, opened up um, you know salvation to the Gentiles, to other nations. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with uh, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 21. It says, "They have moved me to jealousy." With that which is not God, who's the day the Israelites, all right, uh, provoking the Heavenly Father to jealousy with what spiritual fornication with other gods, right, with idols, with idolatry. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. All right, so uh, like I said before, this is some people like to use, especially Christians, uh, to say that um, you know the Most High opened this thing up uh, for all nations and for all peoples. Okay, but the Most High uh, will never forget His people. All right, and as the scriptures say, you know. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, and the Lord, He changes not. Okay. So that says that in the Old Testament, and then it says that in the New Testament. All right. So the Most High does not change. He's the same forever and old and and uh, forever. And uh, when you read Second Ezra the sixth chapter. You know, it goes on to explain uh, the Most High's creation and how he thought about everything before he even did it. He considered everything before he made anything. Okay. So, uh, let's get some understanding on this uh, Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter. Let's go ahead and get uh, Romans 10 and 19. It says, By say... Did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long have I stretched forth my hands into a disobedience. And gainsaying people, right? Because again, Israel is a hard headed uh, by nature, stiff necked by nature, all right? And uh, time and time again, they have uh, despised the Most High's commandments, laws, and have went on to serve the idols of the other nations, which are no gods, all right? So, right here, he's quoting. Deuteronomy in verse 19 and then the book of Isaiah in verse 20 right and this is what speaking 
of Israel. Alright. So let's go on to the next chapter. Starting at the first verse. We'll put on read to like verse uh, 5, 6. It says, I say then have God cast away his people. God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Right. So hath God cast away his people? No. God forbid. Right. Paul. You know he's like. You know I'm also Israel. I'm from the seed of Abraham. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people. Which he foreknew. Right. There you go. Foreknew. Because he thought about everything before. He even created it. Okay. And why the Most High chose it to be like this, we don't know. His, Our ways are not His ways, and our thoughts are not His thoughts. Right? But He's the Lord, Creator of heaven and earth. He can do whatever He wants. Alright? What ye not, what the Scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Which, um, you know, this is a spiritual to now. Because the Most High has uh, reserved to him a remnant. Alright, the elect. All right, because what two thirds of, of uh, the nation of Israel is wicked and are not going to uh, understand this, okay? Even so, then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, and this is what it's all about at this point it's about the remnant, it's about the elect. Right, and the elect, the remnant is only of the seed, uh, as of the nation of Israel. Okay, and uh, today they come in all shapes, forms, sizes. Um, you know, it's not black only or so called black only. All right, Israelites come in all shades of brown and then might appear to look. As the other nations because you got to think about the history and all the captivities that we've been in and up to this day we're still in captivity and part of the curses was that we would um, be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth among all nations among the Gentiles amongst the heathen all right for not following the most high's laws all right and then what do you think happened generation to generation to generation in, in all these lands with uh, the Israelites, um, you know, taking the women of the other nations as uh, their wife, bearing children with them. You know, some of these children uh, would uh, come out looking with the characteristics of the mother, you know, some of the father, but some of the mother as well. All right, and then this goes on to um, the parable of the wheat and the tares, right? But everything's being gathered up to the time of the harvest, and then the separation will be made of the wheat and the tares. All right. <clears throat> so you have dark-skinned people who really are Israelites, and you have um so-called white skinned people who are Israelites and vice versa okay and this is all because of um you know us mingling with the heathen all right and with all those years of all our captivities you know we followed their ways Learn their languages, follow their gods. All right, and what well, we've gone away from our heritage, from our culture, 
from our laws and most importantly from our God. All right, and that was, you know, who who did this happen to, man? You know, who forgot uh, where they came from and the knowledge of who they were? You know, so-called black people are taught that their history began in slavery. Like, come on, man. That wasn't even that long ago. <clears throat> so, uh, let's go ahead and get Acts 13. The account with Paul. Um, Paul preaching. Unto who? Right? Because his office was uh, to go to the Gentiles, but not Gentiles as in the other nations, but the Israelites in the Gentile state of mind. Right? Because you got to think about it again. Put yourself in these times. What is going on? Right now is uh, the, uh, the time of uh, the Romans. Before that, you had, what, the Greeks, right? And where do you find the history of the Greeks in the Apocrypha in the book of the Maccabees, all right? Because in the scriptures, you got the history and accounts of uh, the Assyrian, Babylonian Empire, the Medio persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empire. And uh, there's accounts of all, of all these kingdoms in the holy scriptures but the one where you find the history of the greeks and the most important the israel's history during the time of the greeks is in the apocrypha in the book of the maccabees where uh antiochus you know pretty much um made all the peoples of the land one people and that they consented to his religion and um uh, you know it was against the law to keep the sabbath pretty much uh you know learning the works of the greeks language customs of the greeks all right which uh there you have the terms helen hellenista hellenist you know which is pretty much uh there's differences in those definitions and words but Pretty much a Greek speaking Jew. Alright, so when the scriptures talk about neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, you know, it, it all deals with Israel. Okay, so this is Acts 13, and I'm gonna start at verse 41 and read down. It says, Behold, ye despise and wonder and perish, for I will work a work in your days. A work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Right? And this goes what? Into uh, the Israelites and that Gentile state of mind that, um, you know, when uh, they heard this uh, gospel being preached unto them and that salvation is unto them, they're going to believe it. But what? The Israelites that knew who they were. And knew they were uh, Jews. You know. They. Would uh, not believe it. Right. They would despise it. They would envy them. Right. So this is verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue. The Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation be, was broken up, many of the Jews and prosel, religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So Paul preached this day and then they wanted them to come the next, uh, the next following week, the next Sabbath. All right, and many of the Gentiles, which are Israelites, you know, coming back, to the knowledge of who they were right they they wanted to hear more right and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to together to hear the word of God but when the Jews saw the multitudes right these are the Jews 
who uh, always knew that they were Israelites, right? They were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blasphemy. Right? This is um, the fulfillment of that prophecy. I will provoke you to jealousy with that which is not a people. All right? It was the gospel being preached unto the Israelites who forgot their heritage. Who forgot their customs, who forgot their laws, who forgot their God. And now they're being brought back into the fold. And imagine how these uh, these Jews who uh, knew they were Jews kept the laws, customs um, that they were supposed to. And when they see these uh, Israelites who look like Jews act like, uh, I'm so like these Israelites who uh, look like the Greeks, act like the Greeks. Speak the Greeks language, dress like them, probably got tats, you know, um, you know, and all types of other things, you know, by the outward appearance, you know, they didn't accept them. Okay, which is what well, you you have the same thing going on now. There's uh, groups in Israelite camps who don't accept the so-called Latin and native tribes, right? There's camps that say is black only you know and vice versa man we had a, a scoffer come into our life um our common board before talking about how the so-called black people aren't israelites and that it's only uh so-called latin and uh, native american tribes you know so there's a lot of a lot of uh man a lot of false doctrine out here, man. Alright, so this is verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Right, so this word was first meant to go to the Jews, to the Israelites who knew what what's up already? All right, but what? As hard headed as they were, you know, Most High knew they were gonna reject it, and now what? Well, it's uh, it's being preached to the uh, so-called Gentiles, which are Israelites, okay? Israelites who lost their identity, who lost the knowledge of who they were. All right. So um, you know, pretty much that that that's pretty much all I had and then uh you also have the book of Hosea the first chapter. All right. Um let's might as well we'll close out on that in Hosea the first chapter. You know, you got to bring that out for this topic. You know, there's something that is constantly going to be brought up time and time again. Um because you know it's a lot of false doctrine out here and Christianism alright so this is a Hosea 1 and 10 it says yet the the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there it shall be said unto them ye are the sons of the living God alright so you know, this is those uh, Israelite Gentiles, man. Israelite Gentiles. And then what? You have the book of Romans 9 quoting this same verse. All right, speaking of Israel, who was prophesied to not be a people? It's Israel. All right, it's uh, plain to them to have understanding. All right, but you got to have the Holy Spirit on you. A working brain, the gift of faith, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, it's got to be mingled with faith and the Holy Spirit, the gift of understanding to in order to receive all these things and see it. But hey, only the election is going to get it, man. We understand it. 
All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Until the next time, Shalom.